Well, as a spoken word artist, I hope that um, I could maybe learn new skills and get into that art sector with more confidence, I guess. So I decided to do um, poetry and theatre combined. So at first, uh, I put a bit of my previous experience, which was going to Ireland or um, doing different events, which luckily for me were at the Mac anyway. So. I put a couple of them to show what I'd already had. And how did you evidence all your work? Um, I, I mixed it. I had, I've got YouTube clips. I've got um, print screens of the in, like stuff that I checked out on the internet and uh, photos. But m mainly, I did it as writing because I'm a spoken word artist. Some of our, some of our advent, evidence is on YouTube, and then we had to write a bit about who would be our mentor and what we wanted to do as our main. I started to question things like what was I going to gain and you know how I was going to do it and then because for me it would be better for me to look back on it as well as to have it for evidence so not just taking pictures and you know videos and what but I had to kind of have a plan of what I wanted to do and where I was going to go. So and then I had a mentor who was Evoke and he came down and he helped us a couple of sessions, giving us some confidence boost and we interviewed him, which is on the next page. This is all his interview. Um, we worked with Peter Chan for uh, nine weeks and um, he was a, a storyteller and we worked with him over nine weeks to extend our arts practice. And then going into the sessions, he started giving us like tasks and homework. And, and then we started rehearsing for our big performance that we were planning at the Out of Many One. So it just kind of, he was kind of our guidance or mentor throughout the nine weeks. And then there's a, um, some evidence on YouTube and then we had to get reviews of people out of... That was um, a review from Ermila, which is someone that was from the Sampad, and that was from people that came, or friends. Or... And then we had to go and review different events that were going on. And at the time, it was mainly charity events, because it was... I guess it was just the charity time, so... We went for Reaching for the Stars, which was a charity event for Somalia, and we reviewed that. This is another event that I went to, and it was um, an event to raise money for Yemen, but I was also a part of the event, which that was the poem that I read out with a couple of others, but that was the event for a voluntary thing in, um, in London, which was called TEDx, which was probably the highlight of my experiences because it was we didn't just go as a gold arts award we went as a group of friends because by then we'd already made friends and it was so interesting to learn new things and different people and there was a 16 year old girl that really inspired me that was talking about what she thought of education so it was really good for gold we had to um, debate an issue which was mine was um, I questioned everyone who pays more attention to the art sector, people of what ages, and I used Facebook, text, Blackberry, and I also used people, as you see the writing around is people, and I had, I had to put like advantages, disadvantages, who uses it, and the comments from the public, which extended onto being everywhere. I guess my arts award made me build more confidence and uh, work with people because um, I find it hard to communicate with people that I didn't know and it was just, it kind of became not just even friends, it just became family, like I still keep in contact with most of the people now and everybody I guess helped each other like if I was to, to do an event then I'd have everyone else that were doing the gold arts and would come to my event and review it for me and you know the photographers would take pictures and people who could interview would do the interviewing so everybody helped out helped each other out. So part two of my, uh, was my leadership channel challenge where I um, decided to combine poetry and spoke, uh, spoken word and uh, theatre, sorry. But, and then um, I guess 
building up to the big day, advertising it on Facebook and getting people that know people, have, having different performers. I guess when the time really came, when it came down to the crunch, everybody did know what they were doing. That was the risk assessment we had to do for the event. What would be and what action would take place and then that would be the, the reviews that we got of everyone. What surprised you during your unit two as part of the event? Um, the stress probably was the biggest surprise for me. It was the fact that when you start it, you want to finish it and you want to do the best and when you're yeah, taking your the leadership into action rather than on paper, it's you understand that it's a big step from A to Z, but you have to build up on that and I guess it was just a really good confidence boost, not just for me but for the whole team. So for the event we had to hire out a venue and transform it into a way that we wanted and we had to have the technicians and the photographers and we had, basically we had to literally just work on the place for a couple of weeks to transform it into what we wanted it to be. Well, from performing at the um, Unit 2 Leadership event, um, a guy spotted me from the artist salon and I was invited to perform there for them. So um, I guess getting spotted by different people is a really big uh, a really big confident boost and you know makes me feel like I've achieved everything. What is respect? Respect the smiling at those people that you'll never physically meet. Respect is picking up the letter you throw in the street. Respect is saying hi, laughing and joking. Respect is loving those people instead of provoking. Respect is all genuine, no masculine or feminine. Respect all, disrespect none. When respect is not given, the war has begun. I see this cracks appearing. Some people take this in and out, act like they got this some kind of bad hearing. So I walk up to you and I shake your hand. See if I wear a hijab, you claim I'm taking your land. This was just a free country with laws to abide. But now it seems our colour makes us collide. I have a dream, a real desire. Something I love, something I admire. I want to be a writer, famous to the world. Spread what I gotta say instead of keeping it so cold. I wear a scarf, I cover my body. They shout out terrorist shivers in my body. I'm just a young girl with a dream like you. Is it the fact that I pray five times a day? Or is it the fact that we get the same pain? Or is it just because I'm coloured and you're not? So I turn to you all. What's your identity? What's your faith? Do you believe in heaven and hell? Do you even fear the smell? The curries and the chips, the Arabian and Jamaican. We got diversity. Different races are going to university. So why do I still feel so discriminated? Cut from this world, I'm feeling so eliminated. I remember when they said we're a team. Remember, no colour, no gender, no race, no scene. So hit up on this tonight and open your door. Smile at them strangers, I'm gonna say no more. Okay.